Guys, this video is brought to you by freedomraffle.org. They are giving away a brand new Tesla Model S Plaid. We love doing giveaways and we love it when you guys win these cars. So head to freedomraffle.org to support our Afghan allies and hopefully win a brand new Plaid. Guys, you won't believe it. Guess what we have here to start filming with? The Lucid Air. Finally, we have one to test. I can't wait to show you all around it. Welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video. We're actually here at Clear Detailing where we film for our Out of Spec Detailing channel. We're gonna go deep dive into this Lucid Air, talk about paint quality, a whole bunch of that stuff on the Detailing channel, but I wanna show you around this car. I wanna tell you what I plan to do with it, and I wanna hear from you what you think we should do with this thing. I have it for about two or three weeks, and all the testing to come. I already just drove it over a thousand miles home from California, and I'll tell you all about my trip, all about my impressions of the car so far, and we have a lot more to do with it. So let's get into it. This is a, I believe 2022 Lucid Air Grand Touring. Now it's been loaned to us by one of our viewers. So I wanna say a huge thank you to Peter for being like, hey, I'm on vacation, take my car for a few weeks. Nicest guy on the planet. And I'm just thrilled because now we're finally able to bring some lucid coverage to you. It was just about one year ago that I filmed my first drive in a lucid air. And um, that was at the start of production event in Arizona at the factory, which was a wonderful event, really had a great time. And I filmed a video and I think it has something like almost a million views now. And everyone was asking for more and more and more. And I was like, I really want to test the car. So we couldn't get one from Lucid. So I said, our viewer said to us, hey, we really want you to test this thing. All of us owners in the chat were like, or in our viewers were like, borrow my car, borrow this car. Our viewers are incredible. You guys are the nicest people on the planet. But ultimately I took Peter's car cause he was going away on vacation. And um, yeah, I mean, what a spec too. This is the range spec. So let's talk about specs. Um, starting off, Lucid launched with, a, with the Dream Edition. There was two versions of this, the range and the performance. The Lu they both had 116 kilowatt hour battery pack, 520 miles of range, over a thousand horsepower on the performance. And then the range, of course, 520 miles of range if you got the Dream Edition range. This has the same battery pack size and cell count is my understanding but a slight chemistry change to limit it to 112 kilowatt hours instead of 116. So my question is, we'll have to keep an eye on those early dream cars to see how they hold up over time, if there's any differences in degradation between this chemistry and that chemistry. I don't know what the change is, but it will be interesting to kind of look into seeing what they changed and why. My guess is cost, but we'll see. So this one only goes 516 miles in the EPA cycle. What a shame. Truly amazing. Driving this home from California over the last two days was one of the best experiences. I've really, you know, too long don't watch, really have fallen in love with the car. I think they've, they've got the driving dynamics, the cruising ability down. And I'll talk a little bit more about that as we go. I'll also share my impressions of what I think after the road trip throughout this video. The reason I really like this car is because it has the 19 inch all season tires. Now, you guys know we always do our 70 mile per hour highway range test here on this channel. And that's why these wheels and tires should allow this car to go the farthest possible. Now, I don't think we'll break 500 miles. We'll see. Um, this, my friend Tom ran one, got 500 miles, but that was a Dream Edition range, which again, a little bit bigger battery pack. This is slightly smaller, but we'll see what it does in our conditions. I'm going to try and pick the best possible day to do it and uh, see what it does in the loop style test. That's of course like whatever it does, this thing has more than enough range for what everyone needs. What I'm actually more interested in is the charging. So come on over here, this is the charging port. I did try to just brush off the car a little bit, uh, not with a brush, but with an actual <laughs> spray gun. This one's actually gonna go in for a full detailing process similar to what we've done with our Model S here at uh, Colton's shop. And so that will all be on out of spec detailing. This car is going to go for full paint correction and protection. It's going to be a really fun series to produce. He's going to talk about the intricate details, the overall build quality of the car. We're going to compare this to a Mercedes electric vehicle and of course the brand new Model S so we can see how, you know, the, the fit and finishes and all the small details. Again, this is a customer vehicle. 
that was sold to someone. So I'm really glad we're able to test on this particular car. Um, the charging is most interesting because the owner of this car sent me a photo of, the, of it charging at 330 kilowatts, plus or minus, maybe it was 328, something like that. But that seems pretty insane. So I can't wait to do all the charge testing on this to see what the maximum it is. I've already charged it faster than I've ever charged an electric vehicle before on this road trip, but I only saw a peak of 273 kilowatts, which is three more than I've seen on Taycan. So small celebration. I know the car's got a lot more in it. I just need to optimize it to get into the right conditions to get the fastest charging. Come around the back because um, one thing I want to talk about is this shape is quite aerodynamic and it looks really cool going down the road actually. Um, and I've taken you around Lucid Air a bunch and a million times. Uh, let me show you something that I'm not so pleased with right off the bat. Take a look back here. If you look down the side of the car, uh, the other way around Alyssa, sorry. So come on over here, Alyssa. If you look down the side of the car facing where I am, you'll notice this little lip where the trunk doesn't really, like kind of really doesn't align. And this is gonna be catching quite a bit of air. So if it was up to me, I would try and move that over a little bit for the range test because that's just gonna hammer away at some aero drag. But this is the car, this is what it is. Uh, take a look inside, this one's fully blacked out, black on black. This is before Lucid offered the stealth package on the outside, but really nice interior. Take a look at that windshield if you pan up a little bit there. You can see just a huge glass portion um, and, uh, and overall, a, I think really comfortable seats, really comfortable interior and you know, it's a Lucid Air. I've taken you on many tours of it. So should I tell them what I think about it? Yes, yes? okay. Let's start up front with the headlights because I drove this car quite a bit at night and it has one of the best headlight systems I've ever used. Now matrix function and all of these crazy things are not available uh, in the US yet, but these have such a consistent wide blanket of light, I would say, out in front of the car. I, I think it's as bright as legal limitations allow and it's just wonderful, but it doesn't seem to be blinding anyone. It has the regulations to, to have a little bit of a dark spot where oncoming traffic would normally be um, wonderful. And then the high beams, you're like lighting up mountains in the distance. It's crazy. Really, really good headlights. Super pleased with that. Headlights, really good. And then you get this solid bumper over here, which again, controversial styling. I actually think it looks pretty good from head on. And I actually really like the new stealth package that sort of darkens all of this chrome uh, looking or this polished uh, aluminum look material everywhere. I also like that the Lucid is backlit at night. Really nice attention to detail. The, the headlights were amazing, but the styling's quite controversial. We'll get everyone's opinions at the end. <laughs> these wheels, honestly, if, if I was ordering one of these, which is a consideration, I guess, um, I would not spec these wheels. They, the styling hit is not worth the extra few miles you might lose by going with the bigger wheels. These things do their purpose. They're designed to make the car go far, but man, are they freaking ugly. I am sorry, they are terrible. Colton, do you agree? I agree. He agrees. I mean, just like, what the heck? So you're like sitting super far in and I think ruins the look of the car. The car needs the big wheels, um, just my, my opinion. Um, and, and you can tell they're, they're, they're such, such an offset that no air is gonna be caught by these things. This is partly why this car has such a high EPA range rating. If we go for the bigger wheels, it does take a hit, of course. Um, I will also say in terms of grip levels on these, uh, it's a heavy car. So going into corners and stuff, when you're driving aggressively, you're certainly maxing out the capability of the tire way before the rest of the car. I mean, you can throw it into a corner and just like, and the car's like, oh wow, are we even turning? It's not dangerous. I think it's actually uh, more than enough to like maneuver around town for daily driving. For example, my dad is in, you know, thinking about getting a Lucid Air and I was like, and he wants these wheels and tires. And I'm like, yeah, that's probably fine for him. It's not a safety concern. It's just, I like to go fast on mountain roads and these are gonna limit that performance. So I, in full transparency, I've asked Lucid to see if they can figure out a way to send us the big performance wheels and tires to mount up to this thing so that when we do the performance driving analysis and all that stuff, we'll have the big wheels. All right, come on down the side. Door handles, feeling pretty cheap and plasticky. Just look at that movement in there and that's on all of them. So just a really not premium way to enter the car. Also, when you put your hand underneath, it's quite a 
plastic feeling, I hate to say it, but it's just not a pleasant experience to get in the car. The actual actuation of the door handle is really nice, so whoever did the latch is nice. I just don't like the material selection. And again, I think it's important to be a bit particular on stuff like this because it's a $154,000 car and that's what gets it. Now, in terms of materials, very different material vibe to a Mercedes EQS or EQE, which the EQE is actually on its way over here. It should be here within the next 30 minutes or so. So we'll have videos on that coming soon as well. But really like this Alcantara, this wood trim, the design of everything, truly wonderful. Really especially love this sort of fabric material, very similar to the new Model S actually in there. Really love this. It's a whole step above Model S though on the interior. Having non-frameless windows means very little air noise. The noise in this car is so low, really low. Cruising down the highway at 80, 85, 90 miles an hour in this, you hear nothing. It's gotta be one of the quietest cars I've ever driven. Very impressive. The seats themselves are pretty neat too. So pan in here, you have thigh extension. So you can see it's out on the driver's side and back on the passenger side. You also have adjustable, um, uh, what are these called? Side bolsters. bolsters, thank you very much. And then also a lumbar and massage functions. The massage functions are pretty good. They run for 20 minutes each. So every 20 minutes, you gotta reselect a massage. I guess that's fine just to save some of the components in there, but I just kept hitting it the whole way home because um, I think that's quite nice. Door thunk, not so good, but it does auto close on the way in. If you slam the door, it's strong. It's just like the auto close functions a little bit. So here, let me show you. Big thunk, amazing, really good. But when you go like a medium throttle, you hear that da 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 and then it grabs the auto close. So I think it just has a bit too much of an aggressive auto close function. Um, all right, so I talked about noise, ride quality is really important. No air suspension here in this car. It is a fully uh, fixed coil suspension, but then with an active damper component, it's perfectly tuned for highway cruising. If you're buying this car in this configuration, the, the grand touring non-performance, the car's optimized for cruising down the highway long distance, and this does it perfectly. It's got wonderful uh, suspension. The one thing I don't like is there's three drive modes, smooth, swift, and sprint. Also terrible names, but that's fine. Um, it's kind of funny, they're all S's. It's just confusing, I think. So when you're in smooth mode, which has pictures of clouds everywhere, that's like the general driving mode. That one uh, is really good for just cruising down the highway, but when you floor it, it doesn't give you full power. Same when you bump it up to swift, it seems to give you a little bit more, but not everything. Only when you put it in full maxi max sprint mode does it give you the full power that this thing can unleash, which is just a little bit more than 800 horsepower. And it, and it pulls when you're in that mode, it feels like from 80 to 150 kilometers per hour, of course. It's just a monster, crazy. And this is the slow one. I'm blown away by the powertrain on this. It's really, truly insane. Uh, and that's coming from me driving this car right here every day, which is the Model S Plaid. Uh, I can only imagine what the, the performance version of this would feel like. Now, you may remember I drove the performance version of this car first uh, at that launch event that I spoke about, and I put it in sprint mode. I only found out after the fact that those cars were actually detuned and they didn't give us full power. And that was a bit of a bummer from my side, actually, because I was under the impression that that was everything it had. But obviously, this car feels every bit as strong as I remember that feeling. This is truly insane. You do not need any more power than this. You don't need the performance version, but you kind of want the performance version because it's cool to go fast, right? Uh, in the back, of course, I've shown you trunk space, front trunk. I mean, these are the things we'll get into. We'll compare it to the sizes, but I just wanted to say we got the Lucid Air. It's here. My first impressions are way better than I thought coming into it. Um, and then I think it's really important to talk about the big negative, the big downside here. Um, and I think maybe the, yeah, the big glaring, yeah, negative point. The software in this car, it's just not good. Um, this car has been on sale for a year and it's really hard for a new automaker to build cars and to build them and to get everything perfect. The thing that Mercedes can do and Porsche can do is they can leverage existing components from their other cars. For example, infotainment systems or even ECUs and they can put in there and they just have to work on the electric bits. Lucid, Rivian, Tesla, when they were new, had to engineer everything from the ground up and put it in a car. 
that includes software. I get the impression driving this car, and this is just after driving it for a thousand miles, which I think is more than most journalists, but not enough time to really fully know the whole car. Um, I get the impression that the hardware is all here. The battery pack, the motors especially, the chassis, really incredible. Um, the hardware is here. So that's the, the big stuff that I care about, which is like, okay, cabin's nice. The whole car is, is built pretty well. The software can be updated, but it really needs updating ASAP as possible, as I would say, Michael Scott quote from the office. The thing is, this is supposed to be the long distance road tripping car in the garage, but I would never select to use this on a road trip right now because it doesn't have lane centering. It has really good adaptive cruise control and it pushes you in if you hit a line on the road, although I still think that needs some tuning, but not even any lane centering in this vehicle. So that's the big glaring issue. I've mentioned it uh, a few times in my postings on Twitter and stuff. And Lucid claims that Dream Drive is coming within the next few weeks. We'll believe it when we see it, we'll test it when we get it, and we'll run it through the hogback. Hopefully we still have this car, otherwise we can always borrow another viewer's car locally and run it through the hogback when it gets updated to do all of our driver assistance testing. But I think it's important, you know, for me, my job is to tell you the well-rounded, you know, impression on the car. And it's really good, but it's totally held back by software. Software glitches. For example, the sound system yesterday coming through the mountains kept glitching out on me. I couldn't listen to music. I was actually listening to music on my iPhone. Um, yeah, so take a look on our out of spec motoring channel. Either today or tomorrow, I'll have a video up documenting the whole road trip. You'll learn about the car with me in real time. So that's my impression on the car, which is one of the most solidly built, definitely class leading electric vehicles for cruising, for highway cruising, all that stuff, just wonderful and the software needs a lot of work. Um, their, soft, their head of software, uh, Mike Bell, seems to be the guy to do it, and he came in, I think, a little bit late to the game over to Lucid, but I think he's gonna fix things up. I'm at least hopeful, and I think it, it can all work out in the end, but they gotta act quickly, and they have, because I've had this car for two days, and it's already gotten two software updates. And it's not like this specific car got two software updates, because I'm driving it. Uh, other owners on Twitter have reported they've gotten the same software version. So, I'm glad to see that they're working really hard on it and it's not an easy task to do. So here's what we're gonna do with it. Of course, we're gonna do the 70 mile an hour highway range test on the Grand Touring. This is the range spec. I expect it to blow away anything we've ever tested. Great. We're gonna do the uh, charging test. I'm gonna give you the theoretical maximum the charging the car can take. I'm gonna show you the zero to 100. I'm gonna walk you through all of the charging bits. I actually wish we had that cable where we could charge other cars, but I don't think it's on sale yet. So we won't be able to do that. Cause you can do, I think 19 kilowatt 80 amp in and out of this thing, which is pretty cool. Yeah, the, the vehicle to load thing with the wonder box. It's all pretty amazing technology. Um, what else are we gonna do with it? Performance driving, I'm gonna do a full driving review. You know, talk about city, highway, and canyon cruising. Maybe we'll get it out on track, drag race it against Model S Long Range, Model S Plaid, uh, Rivian would be kind of interesting to see how it does. Um, it's actually really interesting. We have the Rivian, the Lucid, and the Model S here together. And these are the three new American startups uh, disrupting the entire automotive industry. It's really cool to have all three in one place with totally different ethoses and company culture and, and ultimately vehicle produced. But I, I love all three for their own individual rights. And, uh, and plenty more. So um, yeah, maybe we'll do a little race to Vegas with this thing and if this can just go there on one charge. <laughs> it probably can't, probably needs to charge once or twice, but we'll see. We got stuff to do with it. I'm curious to see what you want us to do with it. I'm gonna go in depth. I'm gonna do a full sound system comparison against other cars in its class. Um, which by the way, my impression of the sound system isn't actually that great. Um, the highs and the mids, so everything you're hearing from spoken, from instruments, amazing. Actually world-class with Dolby Atmos, I've put in Tidal, put it to very high streaming, whatever the maximum is. Um, you know, really, really good sound stage in the vehicle. The problem is, it's like, you know when you see these dudes, these bodybuilders that have the big arms and everything and then little twigs for legs? Things miss skip leg day, there's no bass and I've got it juiced all the way to the max. So really needs like a giant subwoofer <laughs> in this thing. It's just like, if you're listening to classical music or rock music, it's totally fine, but uh, rap music or electronic music, weak sauce. So need, need some more bass down low. I'm gonna play around with more settings. That's my impression of the sound system though. And um, 
there you go. Lucid Air Grand Touring has arrived. 154 grand for one of these bad boys. By the way, I just think it's worth mentioning. I put in a reservation for one of these during my drive home. I, I reserved one and I thought, okay, well maybe I won't ever get one, but it'd be good just to hold my place in line. And I thought maybe that would be interesting after the plaid, before my Taycan comes. I don't know, it fits, I'm in this, this is the category of car I am lucky enough to be able to drive as a daily driver and really want to uh, drive some of the best technology for evaluations and comparisons. So I put in an order for a dream, uh, uh, Grand Touring Performance. Then I get a call like a couple hours later from the local sales center here and they're like, oh, when do you want your car? I'm like, what do you mean? When do I want my car? Like, don't, what, like he, he's like, you can get it before the end of the year. Like I thought these things had a big wait list. Just my impression, if you want one, you can just go get one is what they were kind of telling me. That's a bit scary. I, again, have to take a full, well-rounded approach here. That was my experience, at least here in Colorado. They're like, yeah, well, we might even have some pre-built specs towards the end of the year that you can take. That's a big red flag. So I'm not a company analyst. That's not my position. I'm here to tell you about the car, but I thought you should use that little bit of info. Can't wait to spend more time in this. Actually looking forward to spending more time in this. After a thousand mile road trip, normally I like to switch cars. I'm like tired of that one and I like to drive something else. And this today I woke up and I'm like, I can't wait to get back in the Lucid Air and drive it some more and figure it out and learn it. And that's a rare thing and a very positive thing because very few cars leave me with an impression of quality and of pure driving agility for something this big and it left me with one of the best impressions I've ever had driving. So this ranks very highly on my initial impression list, but of course I have to let you know about the negatives. There you go, Lucid Air is here, videos to come. Let's, uh, let's see what Alyssa and Colton think about it. Hey Alyssa, what do you think about this thing? What's your impression of the Air? Uh, I don't really care for it, to be honest. You don't like it? Mm -mm. Why? Um, the infotainment, all that stuff really bothers me for 150 grand. Yeah, so the software uh, is your concern. Yeah. Well, I'm just a huge like money person. What am I getting for the money? And if it's not perfect when I buy it for $150,000, I don't want it. Right, so that's why you drive an Audi, which comes out of the factory one way, doesn't get updates, but it came out somewhat okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's a different type of buyer. And Colton, you're a Tesla owner. Yep. And uh, you're about to spend a lot of time getting to know this car. I am, I definitely am. Are you looking forward to it? Absolutely. I'm really excited to see kind of how Lucid's paint quality, the panel gaps, that type of nerdy in-depth analysis is on this. I mean, it is a striking car. I do like that it is, I would say, a new design that we've seen. But sitting next to Model S Plaid, ugh, I would have a hard time choosing the styling over this. Um, interior, though, something to be said about that. The interior is just like steps and steps above Model S so what we really need is Model S exterior with this interior. That would be like ideal. <laughs> I totally agree. I actually think this thing looks way better in person than it does in photos, and I've noted that many times. Yeah, and there's, and to be honest, this is the first one you're really seeing, and it's got the wrong wheels. It, it does, and I, I've seen photos of the big, I think they're 22s, right? 21s or 22s, yeah. The big wheels make a huge difference. This thing definitely does not photograph well. In person, it looks better. I think that's most like any cars. When you see an initial photo, you're like, oh, that's kind of weird looking. Um, so far, I mean, I like it. I don't, I haven't fallen in love with it yet. Yeah, so. well, we'll see what you think once you spend you know, a week detailing this yeah. thing <laughs> and doing full analysis. Um, but my impression is we have the most aggressive Model S out there, I think. You know, it needs tint, it's still new, but we got those Martian wheels on there and that thing just looks great. And then you come over here and again, just like the sound system, the wheels skipped leg day. But I'm again, I'm kind of pleased that we don't have the big wheels because I want to do the range testing on these. This is, you know, an OE spec wheel and tire to allow it to get the big numbers. And then let's see if we can put the big wheels on it uh, to, you know, really evaluate sure. the car. I think this thing is going to shine in the canyons. Well, and with these wheels and tires set up, I haven't driven this like Kyle and Alyssa but just riding in it. And Kyle told me this is not air suspension. I was like, honestly blown away. I think that probably has a big part to do. Smaller diameter wheels. Be curious to see how that would feel on the bigger wheels. But I was honestly pretty blown away. I, you know, I would initially get in and be, wow, it does have really soft, comfortable suspension. Thought that it was air suspension. So I was kind of surprised by that. Yeah, and a huge back seat as well. Would you mind just opening that yeah. door so we can show everyone? 
I, I, again, I've had tours of this car. Forgive some of the Chipotle in the back of the seat. It's really a road tripper, but just a massive amount of room, unlike the Model S, which isn't bad. But it's tight. But it's a little bit tighter back in the Model S. Absolutely. Anyway, there you go. Lucid Air is here. Hell yeah. I'm going to start filming with it in about five minutes. Perfect. <laughs>